In this video, we'll be looking at the finished product, both the design files and also the HTML and CSS that we'll be creating for this design course. I'm going to open up my web design file here and open up the starting Photoshop file so you can get an idea of where we'll be starting. This file is available for download at the beginning of this module so that you can start in the same position that I start. Uh, this Photoshop file is simply has a color scheme. Let me turn off the guides here. You can turn off the guides by going to View, down to Show, and over to Guides. Our topmost layer is simply a color scheme layer. We'll talk a little bit more about this in a later in a later video, but this essentially is the color scheme we'll be using for our web design. And then the bottom is just a group of folders, a folder group with rectangles as shape layers. You can see each one of these individual layers here. And this is simply used as a reference guide. And we can turn the opacity down on this layer to help us build our web design in equal grids. It'll It'll keep it a lot cleaner, and we'll talk about the grid system a little bit later. But this is the starting point that we'll start to use for our design. You'll notice the document size, if you click and hold it down here on the Photoshop panel, is 1400 by 1500. So the width is 1400 pixels, and the height is 1500 pixels. We're going to design our website, however, inside of this grid, so the overall width will be around 1200 pixels. The ending Photoshop file, let's show you what the design looks like here. And this is the final composition inside of Photoshop. So I'll zoom in here to 100%. And uh, you can see here the topmost layer is the color scheme layer again. You can see how if I zoom out a little bit, the site design is all built around that same color scheme. Let's turn off this layer and just show you quickly how the organization is on our Photoshop file here. So we have our featured slide slider, which is this middle content area where we could rotate photos or any sort of content. And that's grouped inside of a folder. We have our sidebar, which is the area down here. You'll see this fits one, two, three, four, five of those columns. And the sidebar content is all tucked away inside of that sidebar folder. We have our call out, which is the middle section right here with our little call out or a call to action. We have our navigation folder, which of course corresponds to the navigation at the top. We have our content section which is the middle area down here, the main content of the website, all tucked away inside of that folder. We have our logo folder, which is responsible for the logo design up at the top. And then finally, that same 16 grid. You can see it faintly on the video back there, those 16 columns. And we would just normally turn that off once our site is, des is designed. And then finally, I'm gonna hide all the other layers here by holding down Option and clicking on the background layer, and that hides everything but the background folder inside of Photoshop. You can see our main blocks that we use to kind of block this out and some of our background colors that were used for our site design. So that's how this Photoshop folder is organized and we'll be building this entire layout from scratch throughout this uh, web design course. Now I wanna show you lastly, before we close this video down, is the finished website in HTML and CSS. So I'll come back here to my finder window and come into the HTML folder and I've got it tucked away. There's just two files here, an HTML and a CSS file. And let's look at how this will behave. Now, the first thing you'll notice is this website is actually responsive. So on a mobile phone or a tablet device, it would lay out like this with the menu tucked away inside of this little menu icon. And you press the menu icon and the menu pops down. You'll notice there's some fancy CSS3 transitions for fade in on these. I have a hover state as well as an active state and a normal state. I can toggle that off. As the website grows, or as the viewport grows, depending on the device, you can see that the middle image in the featured slider is also responsive. It shrinks and grows according to the content of the viewport. And at a certain breakpoint, I get back the full menu like you saw inside of the Photoshop mockup. And in the full mockup, you can see the same thing. There's some hover effects with some CSS transitions. The entire page is laid out in the two columns with the sidebar and the content over here. This is all live HTML and CSS. And let me uh, zoom out here a little bit so you can see kind of how this works. I'm just gonna zoom the viewport down a few ticks. And as we decrease the browser size at a certain break point, you can see it goes to a tablet size and then it breaks back to a full screen size. So we'll cover the responsiveness of this website in a later tutorial on how to create responsive web designs. But this is the finished product. And you can see if I right click and say view page source, which in Safari, if you're on a Macintosh and you right click and you don't see the source menu, 
you need to come into Safari, go down to Preferences, and all the way over to Advanced, I believe, and then select this option right here, Show Develop Menu in Menu Bar. So once you select that, it adds this new menu in Safari right here called Develop, and there's all sorts of goodies inside of here for web designers to be able to troubleshoot uh, your web pages. But then after I have that Develop menu, I can now right click and notice I have Show Page Source. So I can view the source code for this page, and here's all the source code, as well as all the different assets that are, that are inside my page along with the CSS. So this is the final product. We'll eventually get to this point. And after we have our website completed inside of this HTML and CSS, the final series in this website design course will be to actually make this into a live CMS theme. And we're going to use WordPress, so we'll build a theme and implement this design into a WordPress theme so our content can be dynamic and stored inside of a database. So let's get started with our site design.